Hi, this is Mike, also known as the Wizard of Odds. And today I am going to be interviewing Mr. Rob Singer. Uh, today is the 5th of May, I mean, it's the 11th of May, 2020. And before we get into the topic at hand, Rob, how are you doing in this pandemic, in this time of lockdown and all that jazz? Well, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a big lockdown fan, but there's really nothing else I can do. So uh, we're going to be taking off in an RV in a few days, and we're still going to drive around and uh, enjoy ourselves. Other than that, you know, we're healthy. Um, I don't, I don't even know anybody that's sick. <laughs> well, stay healthy. Enjoy your um, RV trip. Where are you going to be going? Well, we're going up to see my daughter in Minnesota, and then uh, my son's meeting us up there, and he's going to take the RV and do go visit friends from the Army that he was with, and we're going to drive the car back that we're hauling, and then we're going to go camping up around Lake Tahoe for the summer. Okay. Well, I've actually heard about your RV, and we might be getting back to that. Okay. okay, but the main point of this interview, to give the audience some background, is it's it's pretty well known that two people named John Kane and Andre Nestor discovered a bug on IGT Game King machines that if you went through a certain sequence of pressing the buttons and doing things, you could make a great deal of money. And I hear that you claim to have independently discovered this same bug and also exploited it to make a great deal of money. So is this true? And if so, can you give us the executive summary of that, please? Uh, yes, it is true. Um, I discovered it in early 2004, like January, February timeframe. And I exploited it until they got caught. I call them Kane and unable because <laughs> they screwed up so bad. But they ended my run on it and I wasn't happy with it, but I quit then. I stopped playing uh, that kind of game. Um, I did it for five and a half years. I made about $2.8 million doing it. And I know more about it than anybody else, that's for sure. Anybody who wants to ask me questions about it, I have no problem because I don't think there's anybody else, including the techs at IGT, that know more about this play than I do because I actually played it for five and a half years and I played every version of it that I could think of and I found out a lot of things about it while I was doing it. All right, so Kane and Nestor discovered this play in 2009, correct me if I'm wrong, and it only lasted with them less than a year because I think you might say they got greedy and got caught. Well, I think it was a couple months at the most that they played it. Okay, am I right about 2009? Yes. Okay, and you say you discovered it in 2004? Right, early oh. 2004. And I've been looking for something on the machines for about four years by then. And I happened to find it, and the machines that were infected started coming out in 2002. So, okay, can you elaborate on how you discovered this bug? Well, I was looking for anything. I didn't know what I was looking for. I was always looking. After I played my sessions of my particular strategy that a lot of people are familiar with, um, I'd sit there for a couple hours and I'd dibble with different machines. And one day I was playing and I says to myself, when is the hand over? But it's not really over. And then it came to me, it's, you know, double up. I mean, the hand's over, but it's not really over until you press yes or no if you have it on double up. Mm -hmm. So I put it on double up. I asked for them to come over and do it. And back then it was simple. They'd do it, no problem, no question. And I happened to catch, uh, when I got a winner, I was playing bonus poker, I think. I got a full house. I saw that the light on the machine came on while I was in double up mode. And I said, that's odd. So I said, well, I wonder what happened. I put a bill in it. And it wiped off the double up question, and it went back to the more games uh, menu. So I hit more games, and the menu came up with the, uh, the denominations and all the games. So I picked the highest denomination. I don't know. I don't know if I picked the highest one, but I picked a different one, and I picked uh, my game, right? I'm, I mean, the game I was playing, and I hit 
I was worried about not getting paid. I didn't know what to hit. I hit all the buttons. Nothing would pay me. So, but then I hit cash out just to see what would happen if I hit that button. And it, all of a sudden, it paid me 40 credits. It, I think it was $5, if I'm not mistaken, instead of the quarters that I was playing. And that's how I discovered it. So then I, I just I got anxious about everything. I came home to Arizona. And after I had dinner, I was so excited about it, I went back. And could you reproduce the same sequence of events easily than when you went back? Oh, yeah. It was depending on what machine you're on. Not all machines work, right? Um, so for instance, if I went to uh, the Mirage, for instance, uh, not all the machines worked. All right? One, it was hard to find. But if I went to Casino Monte Lago, they all worked because I think they opened after the bug came out, right after the bug came out. All right. So I know you already touched on this, but can you be as specific as possible that if somebody found one of these machines before the bug got patched, what is the exact sequence that you had to go through to get paid? Okay, there's, there's uh, multiple sequences uh, depending on what you wanted to do. Um, a, a straight hand that you would play if you got four or five, for instance, on mm -hmm. a dollar through twenty-five dollar machine, five denominations. Mm -hmm. uh, when you got four or fives, you would then uh, the double up question would come on if you you had to have double up on, of course, and. It came on, you put a bill in the machine or a ticket, any bill, any ticket, and it would wipe the question off. Then you could hit more games, the yellow tab, and it would come up to the denominations, which you could change, which is like magic for a video poker player. And you could also go to a, any game you wanted. Of course, you, you punch in the game you just got the four fives on, and then you'd hit the highest denomination just before that, and you hit cash out, and you would get, uh, instead of a uh, $250 winner on uh, Super Double Bonus, you'd get a $6,250 winner on $25. You only played $5, but you get $6,250 out of it. And that's just a, a small example. Now, that's one way. Another way would be if you hit yes when it came up to double up. Do you want to double up? Yes, no. You hit yes. Okay. You win, right? You get 500 credits. Then you put the bill in, right? You can keep going and take your chances and then lose it if, you, if you're unlucky. But after one try, you put a bill in, and now you got 500 credits, and you hit boom, 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 and you're on 500 credits at $25, and you get paid for that, which is like $12,500, right? Or you could do what Kane and... Uh, Nestor did a lot, and you could look for a pre-existing winner that they didn't even play to get, and play your hand on a different game, put the bill in when you want a, uh, a hand of any kind of winner, jacks are better, for instance, and then you'd, you'd hit more games, and you'd change the denomination, and you'd go to that game, which was on double-double or whatever the winner they saw was, and then you'd get paid for that winner, which wasn't even their winner. And then you could also use that winner over and over again if the casino was not the type of place that would ask you to uh, play it up. Which, you know, many places do, but many places don't. So that's where they went wrong. They used that, that a lot. I, I'm convinced they used that more than anything else, which led to their downfall. That would seem pretty lazy to not even gamble to get this money. It doesn't take a lot to get four of a kind. I mean, yeah, you have runs where you don't get them for 2,000 credits, but you're playing quarters or dollars. Big deal. I Every week I played, I went up there every week, and I, I went all over the state of Nevada. I just took $5,000 with me. For instance, you know, I in order to get uh, $520,000 profit each year, I only had to get about $600,000 in W2G. Whereas if I was playing my strategy, in, in order to get ninety dollars or $100,000 of winners, I had to get five, dollars $600,000 in W2Gs because you lose a lot of it. Mm -hmm. but in this case here, this was so simple that 
I just hit one winner at each casino on a W2G. Even though it hit, it, it works on the low winners, where you could get jacks or better, you get a couple jacks, and you could change it from dollars to twenty-five dollars, and you get paid the uh, twenty-five dollars uh, five credits instead of five dollar credits. But I didn't want to do that because it's a lot of shuffling your hands around and trying to figure out, you know, putting bills in and changing buttons. There's a lot of nosy people, right? And I didn't want to have to turn around and look around and see who's, who's watching me. I just wanted to hit a winner and get the hell out, which I did. But I also put my, I didn't play with a card ever, except after I hit the winner, then I would put my card in and play and, uh, until I lost about 5%. I would try to lose on the highest denomination. I don't know, uh, you know, to me it was like a safety net uh, thing that I did just to make myself feel as if when they look at my record, I had some play on the high denomination. Uh, whether whether they combine the W2G winner with that, some places do, some places don't, when they look at your record instantly. Um, it was just something I was uh, conservatively doing. Now, I heard that the lights uh, on the bill validator had something to do with this. Is that true or false? It's, it's true. I mean, it's not the lights that have anything to do with it. It's the fact that they came on, which means the bill validator or the bill acceptor would accept the bill when the light's on. I mean, if they're working correctly, the light is on when when you're sitting down. You put a bill in, and you can put as many in as you want, as you know, and then you play a hand. As soon as you hit deal, the light goes off. Right now, the lights on these machines, I don't know if today, maybe they're LEDs, but back then they weren't. And, all, and quite a few of them, the lights weren't working. And some of them flicker, and you know, you just had to try, right? And I had machines at every casino in the state, and I would go to those same machines every time I played this, because I didn't feel like looking around and I didn't have any reason to, because of, well, every three or four months I was in the same casino, winning something and leaving. They don't care. They don't look at one-time winner. Even if you win $100,000, which I did multiple times, they don't care. I mean, they know you're going to come back. They figure you're going to come back, lose it. So there's no, no reason to be concerned about the eye in the sky looking at you. Okay, so you're saying you gave them some cover, legitimate play, just to smooth things over? Sure, just to make sure, it was to make me feel good about, well, I, I showed them that I played. Because if they somehow could look back, and I don't know what they can do, they look back at your record and they see quarter play, quarter play, quarter, and, and, you know, no play, really. All of a sudden, the card's in there showing them high limit play, right? That shows them that at least I was playing on that denomination. I don't know what they can tell when you not don't have your card in or what. But I don't want somebody to see me playing at quarters. And then uh, all of a sudden, the winner comes out on a $5 machine when I never played it. So I played it after before I left. And I'd lose on purpose. OK, I see. So let me make sure that I understand the sequence that you have to go through for this to work. So you can either walk up to a machine that already has a good hand on it or play at a low denomination until you say you get a four of a kind. Correct. Say, say you do that at a low denomination, say a quarter. You've got the four of a kind on the screen. Then do you click the double up button? No. no. Then what do you do? Well, it depends on what kind of double up. In the early days of this, the double mm -hmm. up will come on every hand that you want. Mm -hmm. You have a yes or no arrow. Most of the time it was an arrow on the left and the right. So mm -hmm. The whole button. And I'm referring to the kind that, um, well, I, it can be any kind, but I played a lot of video poker, and I almost never see the machine where you're bothered every single win to double or not. I'm. The, it's my understanding that you had to ask a casino employee to enable the double up feature. Many times, but not all the time. There's a lot of machines even now where they mm -hmm. have not a lot, but there's some where mm -hmm. the double up is enabled already. And today it's all the yellow double up button on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk. Let's say, for example, that it's on the kind of machine where you're not bothered every single hand. Um, okay, so so step one. You get 
a good hand, say a four of a kind on any level, then right. what is step two? Step two is the double up is already, it, it's asking you the question, do you want to double up? Mm -hmm. Or you hit the double up button. All right? mm -hmm. Open the double up mode mm -hmm. after you hit a winner. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to do double up, you don't touch the button, you just play another hand. Yeah. Right? But it's in double up mode. So yes. in those kind of machines, you just put a bill in and it, the more games button lights up. You mm -hmm. All right? And then you go to the menu, which is games and denomination. Mm -hmm. You hit the proper denomination for you, which is the highest. Mm -hmm. you, you hit the game where you just hit your winner on, which double, double, whatever. Mm -hmm. and then you hit cash out. And then the jackpot light comes on and all that. Okay. Like, just did it that way. So forgive my ignorance, but I haven't actually... I don't think I've ever actually made a double up bet in video poker. Okay, but you hit some, there's something on the screen and then you press the button that says double up, right? You don't have to, well, on, on the newer ones, you don't, on the later ones that came out later, you don't have to hit double up. It's okay. already on. It's okay, on so you, okay, so there's a winner on the screen and then you put more money in, is that what you're saying? Yeah, you put a bill or a dollar bill or a ticket for 20 cents or whatever you want. And it wipes off, if it's the old style, wipe off the question. If it's the new style, it just it goes to the, the more games button comes on. Now, I thought that when you hit something of 1,200 or more, it automatically freezes up and the music plays and you get a hand pay. 400 or more, did you say? 1,200. Oh, 1,200 or more. Not, on, not when you got double up on it. Okay, I did well, not know that. Give you the chance. If you, if you get a royal on the uh, $2 machine or whatever, uh, mm -hmm. it asks you if you want to double up. Okay, okay. So there's something on the screen, a good hand. Then you, and the double up feature is enabled whether or not you ever double oh, up at all. You, machines, but mm -hmm. it wasn't that way most of the time. There was some at the end of my run. Mm -hmm. Almost all of them were... Uh, okay. Annoying every winning hand, mm -hmm. which was tolerable doing this, of course. But normally you would choose, don't ask me again. Okay. Uh, yes, no, or don't ask me, no, don't ask me again. Okay. So, so I wouldn't do that. Okay. Okay. So you put more money in, and then you say it goes back to the game screen, like where you choose a game, right? Right. right. Okay. And then at this point, do you choose a different game or do you bump up in denomination? You first of all you bump up the denomination. Uh -huh. then, then you choose the game where the winner is. Whether uh -huh. it's, in in my case, I only did my winners. Uh huh. And the other guy, Kane and Nestor, they picked. They knew which game had the winner on it, like four aces and super uh -huh. double. Uh -huh. And they would go to that game. Uh -huh. and then they would hit cash out, or I would hit cash out on the one I got. Okay, so let's say that you hit something good on triple double bonus. You put more money in, you go to the game screen, you go up to the a higher denomination, and then do you go back to triple double bonus or a different game? No, you go back to triple double bonus. And is that what Kane and Nestor did too? What's that? And did, in the Wired article about Kane and Nestor, it, it gave the impression that they went through a third step where they went to a different yeah. game and then they went back to the original game. And that's because, and that's because um, it was the sequence is identified as incorrect on there. It's not the sequence you would use mm -hmm. for, for how to do this properly. Mm -hmm. so they were they were more they were showing the wired people were identifying how you would do it if you used a pre-existing winner. Mm -hmm. They did not tell the story about how you would do it if you used uh, your own winner. Okay. All right. So you said before that you've made between 2004 and 2009, you made 2.8 million doing this. Correct. Okay. Now I hate to ask, this is none of my business, but, but since I hear that you've brought up this in the forums, that do you have any evidence of making this much money? Uh, I don't know if somebody could tell me what uh, evidence consists of. I mean, How about old tax returns? Tax returns. Uh, 
I don't have those anymore. I don't keep them from 10 to 15 years ago. I don't know why. You know, I mean, people criticize me for that, but, you know, I mean, you don't keep, I don't keep tax returns. You don't need them after three, four, five, seven years max, for depending on what you're filing. And the last thing I was thinking about when I was doing, putting this play down was, I wonder how I'm going to prove it. When, you know, I wanted as little documentation as I could possibly have for the future because I didn't know if I was doing something illegal or not. So I didn't want to have any pictures or videos or uh, documentation of any sort. In fact, I didn't spend any of the money. I took it all in cash. I stashed the cash in a safe. And I didn't spend any of it until I bought an RV. And then mm -hmm. the Okay, so getting back to the RV, <laughs> I hear that you spent a great deal of money, like a million dollars on an RV. Is it's that two, true? Right, it's a 2011 Newell. Um, it was used when I bought it, but I only had like 1,600 miles on it. Mm -hmm. It was a million and a half dollars. And I bought it after we had an experience, a bad experience with a, a, a cheaper one before that. Mm -hmm. And I have mm -hmm. I'd have never bought something like that if I didn't have the spare money because you know we work you know the people you know they want to criticize you go we work in the aerospace industry my wife retired after 33 years at the same aerospace company as an engineer and I worked in the government for the federal government and then I worked in the private industry and I had a high level job and you know we say we we have we have 401ks which are now in different kinds of accounts now. We could have bought something like that on our own. That's what the whole thing is. I mean, people say, oh, you're, you're broke and this and that. I mean, I bought, a, I bought an RV that I really would have never bought before if I didn't have this kind of money from uh, getting it through video poker. Because an RV is nothing but a, a money pit. And is, is this the same RV that you're going to visit your uh, daughter in in Minnesota? Correct. And we're going to leave it up there, and then my son's going to take off in it. And have any of your followers seen this RV? I put a picture of it on the other forum years ago. I don't know. I don't. I don't know where it is or anything like that. But you know, whenever I put pictures up of anything, winter, mm -hmm. uh, whatever, people say, "Oh, you photoshopped it. It's not yours." You know, this is fake. You know, you put a W two G up. Oh, you you uh, made it up, and you know, I mean, it, pictures, words, nothing means anything. I mean, the, the people criticize you; they want to criticize you. That's fine. I don't care. Okay, and I I want to say again that it's none of my business what kind of RV you have, but I hear that you've put it out there that this is evidence that this is all true. So it kind of makes it my business a little bit. Okay, yeah, I mean, evidence of that. It's evidence that I had a good job too. I mean, okay. I mean, well, okay. Good point. Too. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So, so you discovered this in 2004, and as we all know, you had a I would call infamous career writing for Gaming Today, and From you're 2001 to 2009. Okay. Thank you. And it was basically your contention that video poker machines did not play fairly. That every that I would say that the games are fair, that every card has the same chance. And you disputed this in virtually every article for years in gaming today. And you also promoted a progressive betting system where you kept basically going up in denomination until you hit a certain goal and then you called it quits for the day. Is that fairly accurate? Well, first of all, the, the uh, progressive uh, strategy I had, I played from 2000 to 2004. I netted a win of $375,000 over those four years. And mm -hmm. it's not as simple as you play until you win and you quit. Uh, it mm -hmm. goes up and down and up and down a denomination and game volatility, different games. Um, and there's special plays that deviate from optimal strategy. That part is one part of this. I actually did that and I don't, I don't understand um, Oh, I, I guess I do understand why people don't believe it, but that's fine. I don't care. The second okay, part so of that, uh, the second part of that is uh, 
Yes, I railed against AP Play. Um, as you know, you probably know, I tried it and I failed at it for six years before I started playing my strategy. And I attribute that to, you know, I know what's going on. I just, I'd be flying home from overseas somewhere after being on airplanes for five, six days in a row. And I really probably, I mean, I didn't play up to my potential at all. I believe in people who say they play advantage play and they win because of a small percentage. They grind it out. They use marketing, uh, slot club marketing to get a, a profit. And they do this constantly. And I said for years that's all BS. And uh, I kept up my act on this after 2004, which I wasn't sure how long I was going to keep it up for. But I kept it up because I needed something to uh, deflect myself from what I was doing. I had I had this thing I was doing, which was uh, turned into a huge anxiety thing for me. I mean, really, you don't know. I don't know what people know today. I didn't know there'd be a case where it got thrown out of court. I didn't. I figured I might be doing something illegal. I got a family. I got children. I got grandchildren. I didn't want to have to face the music if I got caught. But then again, you know, as a video poker player, you're going to go after it if you find something like this. And I did it. And I had the right tools in my head in order to do this successfully. I did a lot of things that people wouldn't do. A lot of people tell me they'd have done it differently. Fine. All right. I did it my way. I was successful. I shut my mouth for 10 years after Cain and Nestor got caught. I didn't even tell my family. I told my wife nothing. In fact, I told her recently, here, well, last year after I told Axel. And uh, she didn't care. She said, I figured you were doing good anyway. Uh, who cares? Right. I mean, but I wouldn't tell anybody because I didn't want to get caught and I didn't want somebody else to uh, rat on me. And I, I, I had a burning desire to tell somebody. And that's the only reason I told Axel and Mickey Krim because I wanted people who know what this was to understand it and to maybe they can feel what I felt while I was going through it. It wasn't something that you want to uh, look at and say, oh, this is easy. It wasn't easy. I had no knowledge of what was going on. I had no knowledge of what machines were right. I had no knowledge of if anybody else was doing it. All right now you look back at it and you say, oh, we have all this knowledge. We can look at this now and say, oh, you should have done this. You should have done that. No, I shouldn't have done this or that. I did it right. I did it my way. I made enough money out of this. All right. And, and I'm not telling people, I didn't release this to the guys to get credit or to impress anybody. I released it because I had to release it. You can't keep something like this inside of you forever. And Why not? Well, it's just, I'm a video poker guy, all right? It's something that I found that nobody else really knows about, except for Kane and Nestor, and everybody knows their story. I wanted to tell somebody who understands it to understand how I felt about this when I was doing it. Now, maybe they can, maybe they can't, but I think they can. I think anybody could once they stop and think about what it was like with no knowledge about any future stuff uh, in, in, the, um, in the story. So they okay, so, what I did. okay, so you called your, shall we say, Gaming Today era an act. Um, can you remind me how well you did in video poker before you stumbled upon the double up bug? I made about $90,000 a year for the first four years, 2001, 02, and 03. Um, I was doing pretty good. Um, it was better than I thought. I mean, I, it's, not a, it's not a strategy that beats the math. I didn't rewrite the math books. I, I, I don't know how many people would do well with this. I'm a very unique person. I, I went through this strategy for years before I came up with it. And I, what it does is it gives you every single advantage you can get in order to experience good luck. That's all it is, right? I mean, I'm not trying to prove I beat the math. I never did. I may have 
uh, talked about that on forums at times just to piss people off, but that's not what I did. I did not beat the math. I was lucky to win what I did, and I have no doubt that if I played it forever, I would not win. But for the individual sessions that I played, I did damn good. Okay. So, again, you called it an act. Are you prepared to say that you were wrong in your many years of writing for gaming today about how to win at video poker? Yeah. Um, I even called gaming today, I don't know, eight or nine months ago. And I explained the whole thing to their uh, managing editor. Mm -hmm. And what did he or she say? First of all, they never heard of the double up. Uh, deal. Um, they didn't care what I wrote back then. It's a new owner now. Uh, Chuck DeRocco was the guy that I convinced back in the early days. And I, I actually played a session in front of him in order for before he hired me, which I did for free. I never took a penny from him. Um, I, he wanted to pay me. I wouldn't take it because I said, I'll do my winning at the machines. If I don't win, too bad. All right, I'm out. But uh, he, uh, the first session I played, I won, and he was impressed. So, All right. Well, I, I appreciate your honesty in recanting yeah. what you've written about before. Now, for years, you were really bashing Bob Dancer. Would you like to – do you have anything you'd like to say to him right now? Well, yeah. Um, Bob, uh, I mean, I came into this because uh, I started in 2000. I made my name Rob Singer because I wrote a couple books under that name in the song two or three years. And I picked my name Rob Singer just to antagonize him a little bit because I had gone to a class of his before I did this and when I was an AP and I couldn't win. I lost for six years in a row as an AP. So I, I guess I took out my frustration on uh, the AP community for so long. Um, Bob Dancer was, of course, he's the biggest name, so naturally if you want to make a name for yourself, you go after the biggest name. That's what I did. Um, we had our times. We were friendly at certain at certain times. For instance, his book, The Million Dollar Video Poker, best video <laughs> poker book I ever read because it's entertaining, right? And I told him that. I wrote a good review about it and all that. We have our good times. We've had mostly uh, nasty times. And... Uh, I'm not really apologizing for what I did because I had a, a real good reason for my own survival on this play for what I did, but I do regret some of the things I said. All right. Do you have anything to say to the people that did follow your strategy and maybe lost money with it? Um, I wouldn't say they lost money. I don't know if they did. There's one person I know that lives in Las Vegas and he plays my strategy at the high limits, and he says he does well still to this day. I checked with him two days ago, and he's still doing well. He's not a computer guy. He's older. He doesn't care about you know, forums or any of that stuff. He just wants to play. He's got quite a bit of money, I think. I mean, there's a house that I can visit him in. It's very big and nice. So I, I, I don't know whether people lost money or not. I don't think they did uh, because I didn't. Um, I don't know that people are built like me and able to do the things that I'm able to do. But if they have lost money, um, my apologies to that. But I don't really think that they, you know, I don't think that people really could play the strategy that I developed because it's very complex and I didn't really have enough time Sitting with the hundreds of people I sat with and explained it to them, you can't learn just by doing that. You have to sit for several days and 10 hours a day in order to learn it perfectly. All right. Somebody asked me to ask you, is there anything you've written in the forums recently that wasn't true that you'd like to retract? Hmm. No, not that okay. I can no. All right. Okay. I accept that. Well, is there anything else you'd like to say that didn't get touched on in this interview? Yeah. Well, um, the first thing is uh, there, 
the reason this interview came along is it wasn't uh, started by me. I guess uh, you have a member on yours, and he's also a member on ours under a different name. Um, he, I don't want to name names. People know who I'm talking about. But uh, I, he wrote something up that was provocative, and it wasn't entirely true. And I explained this. He was a he was the second person I told about this to because he was a friend of mine, and I wanted to tell him that what I was really doing over the years, and just out of uh, courtesy. And it for some reason with him it got out of hand. I don't know what's going on. But then he posted something that said that if I want to contact you about this, and that's fine. And I did. I said it would be a good idea to set the record as straight as possible. Um, you know, I mean, is I got a lot of people that that can't stand me because of the, the reputation I built up over the years. You know, and and if you if you look at it from my point of view, really, I mean, what people say or think doesn't change anything in my life. I mean, we're still going to be here. We're still going to go on our trips. We're still going to live our life. And people can say all the nasty things and lies about me. Uh, I've heard that I'm on welfare and food stamps and all. You know, they can say all that stuff, but it doesn't change anything. It doesn't mean anything. Um, and I think people do that out of frustration. Yeah, they don't like uh, maybe people, they call me a cheat. Maybe people don't want to believe what I say. Um, I don't know what it is, right? There, I mean, there's. There's people, and the other thing is, you know, I'm from, I, I'm a video poker guy, but I'm not from that world. I'm from corporate America and government America, my first 10 years of work. And, you know, people who do that do have success. And, you know, my wife is a big part of the success we have because she put in 33 years at the same aerospace company, uh, plugging away while I was gone all the time overseas. I've been all over the world 50 times. Um, with the work I had to do, and video poker came, and and I happened to come across an unusual, very profitable play, and that's the way it is, and it'll never change. That's what I wanted to say. All right. Well, Rob, thank you very much for doing this interview. I wish you a pleasant RV trip to uh, Minnesota, okay. and yeah. Um, again, appreciate your time and um, stay in touch. I appreciate everything you've done here, uh, Mike, and I hope uh, the word gets out and if people want to uh, say things about it, let them say it, and if I can, I'll respond on the forum. And which forum can people find you at? Uh, what's it called? VCT, I guess, VegasCasinoTalk.com. I've heard of that. Yeah, that's where I, I post. I'm banned everywhere else, including at your forum. <laughs> All right. Well, again, thanks, Rob. And um, thanks, audience, for watching. And I'll see you later. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Okay.